Hey, welcome to All Things Business. Thank you, welcome to the channel, and thank you much, so much for subscribing. Today we have a beautiful lady here in Miami, Florida, who's just a superstar on right, and we're on the road traveling and bringing you guys some live things to show you. But this young lady, Sherry, she's been an amazing lady. I want her to tell a little bit about her background and what she's done and how I've blessed her life. So can you tell everybody a little bit about your background and what you do? Yes, my name is Sherry Afwape, and I am originally from Chicago. I was Windy a city girl. Yes, sir. Okay. And I was a federal investigator with Department of Justice. Did that for like 13 and a half years. So if you don't mind me asking, what is, what is a federal investigator? What, what did you do as a federal investigator? I investigated cases of employment discrimination. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And I uh, worked for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Oh, wow. So you put the guys and girls in the prisons that did wrong. Well, actually, it was the employees that would file the complaints. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, they work for yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So um, I did that for, uh, for, for nine and a half years in Atlanta. I started uh, my career in the state of Illinois as a human rights investigator, and I joined the gov federal government subsequently. Um, and uh, right now, I'm a, a residual income entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. How did you get turned on to residual income? Tell everybody how. How did you get turned on to that that industry or that field? Yes, sir. I found a. Uh, someone called me on the phone. Okay. And said it's something that you need to take a look something at. Something you need to take a look at. And I was like, O M G! When I heard <laughs> about how you earn income from referring information. Yes. And I was like, Really? And I and I took a look at it and and nobody had to convince me because it just made sense. It made sense. It huh? just made sense, you know. And so I got got involved and I started getting my little checks and I was like, this really works, <laughs> you know. So I was excited about so that. So let me ask you a question: When you got involved, how long did it take you to get your first check? Would you say? Probably about three months. About three months. Yes, okay. Sir. And the checks got a little bit bigger each yes, time. Yes, sir. And each time. In. Each time. Yeah. They really did. They started to grow. That's and so. I was excited about that. Okay, good, good. Yes. So in the meantime, as they were growing and growing, what, what were you thinking about they get certain length or certain, you know, certain, you know, amount? What would you, what would you do with yourself? I would, or would you buy I would yourself? island hop. Okay. I would island hop. I, I, that's what I've always wanted to do long term okay. is to just jump on a plane and uh -huh. end up somewhere, you know, all the bills are paid. Yes, you don't right. have to worry about anything because that check is going to come the next month. Uh -huh. And it's just going to come the next month. And it's going to come the next month. You know, and so that's what I thought about. Having freedom. Having freedom. So let me ask you this. How long have you been involved in the uh, network marketing industry? Over 22 years. Okay. So if you don't mind, if you don't mind sharing, share some of the things, the blessings you got out of your, your, your business. I got a chance to meet this gentleman. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, I was like, wow, when I first saw him and I was amazed about the, his background and the information that he was sharing. And it's like in the federal government, you don't get a chance to meet people like you, you know, uh, giving and open and just want to share information to help you live a better life, you know. And so it just made things better for me, you know, because I said, wow, I saw somebody look like me that okay. I could go and and do something different because I was told in high school that if I ever finished high school and went to college I would never graduate Wow! and so I took I took that into in my heart and but I did graduate from college and then I ended up getting a stellar position with the federal government mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. being able to see that somebody like me mm -hmm. could come into into network marketing and then have and then Excel was right. in, it was important to me. Right, that's important. So you saw someone like me made a difference, and if I could do it, hey, I saw somebody look like me doing it, therefore I could do it. Yes. Wow, that's a, that's inspiring. Yes. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that inspires you no matter what your background, creed, color, nationality, beliefs, or religion is. Don't let that be a hindrance to you, you know, and uh, just believe in you, because a lot of things we were taught coming up, you can't do this, you can't be that. You, you know, you'd be like a daddy, your mom was nothing, and so on and so on. And a lot of that's been ingrained in a lot of us out there across the world. And we believe that because that's all we heard from mom and dad, people that we love and respect. 
and then we go to school the schools indoctrinate us to believe that we cannot be more than this right. you know or they train us to be good employees but not to be entrepreneurs right i think in 1905 i think the rockefeller foundation took out financial education out of school systems mm -hmm. because they didn't want people to learn but they wanted to be good workers and if they like you we make you a supervisor therefore mm -hmm. so you got started in network marketing 20 some years ago you start making some, some money tell us some of the things that you really got to you bought for yourself or done or went or places that, I've, uh, I've had a chance to move to florida okay okay and uh we built our house from the ground <laughs> you know okay. and, which is something that's amazing um and i've lived in a part of florida that i've always wanted to live in that's close to the gulf of mexico okay okay and so i'm like 20 minutes from the gulf of mexico so you know just having vision and just stay in the course you know just keep moving no matter what it what happens you just keep moving forward yeah I think you said a key word was called vision. Vision is so important. And I think that little black book say, without vision, people perish. And a lot of people perish because they, they, they hear it on Sunday, but they don't live it their other six days of the week. But that's so great to have vision. You know, um, let, let me ask you this. What kind of tips would you give people out there that's on the verge of thinking, hey, I can do this, but I can't do it. I can do this, but I can't do it. You know, they've been broken down, thinking yeah. that they can't succeed in network marketing yes. or business. What kind of tips would you give somebody out there listening right now today? I would say, no matter what, you have greatness on the inside of you. No matter what someone has told you, there's greatness on the inside of you. You have to begin to believe in yourself. And the thing is, is that when you find a mentor like Mr. Thomas, he encourages you on a daily basis, you know, and just by being on his call, when you have someone like him, that encourages you and, and says your name, you know, <laughs> really a lot yeah. of times when you meet people, they don't even, I said, has someone told you that you're great today? And they're like, no, well, I'm telling you that you're great today, but being on calls and, and, and zoom calls and being around someone like you, it encourages you to keep forward. So I would encourage you to get a good mentor, someone that is pouring into you words of wisdom, someone that's pouring into you that, that you can do it, yeah. you know? And uh, that's the most important thing. You have to change the circle of people that you're around. Yeah. I tell people, look at the word American, spell it out, American. What do you, what do you see in that word? And I have people like, I can't see anything. And somebody said, I can. I said, no, what about the word M-E? Me, I can. And yes, you can. You can do that. You know, it's, it's wonderful that you brought this up because a lot of people have been discouraged so much and they think it's a pie in the sky or, or, or scam. And I tell people, scam? You can't say... You know, we're so busy being indoctrinated that we can't have something we call scam. And I call scam still confused, you know, about money. Mm, that's good. Because <laughs> people always think, you know, if you went to school for all of these years, still broke after five or 10 years, you've been scammed. So, you know, it's amazing. So um, what would you do differently today, looking behind, uh, that you didn't do then? Or what would you change, would you say? More personal development. Yeah. Because... The more you build yourself up mentally, the better you'll have, the better run you'll have in life. Yeah. You know, because you're the only one, you're the CEO of yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't move forward with you, you can't be of value to anyone else. That's so important. I was thinking the other day, I was reading this, this book by, uh, uh, called um, uh, Biblical Principles from the Bible from, from uh, the Jewish perspective. And the guy says, everybody in the Jewish community look at themselves as a business. Mm -hmm. and, you know, in other words, my name was Al Thomas, it'd be Al Inc. You know, you're the sharing on Inc. So we, you know, when we go somewhere, we should look at ourselves as being in business. Mm -hmm. If we work for somebody, we should look at ourselves as being the best business partner for that, whoever we work for. But not only that, what can we strive for around our schedules to become independent from that? You know, and that's what's very important. Uh, let me ask you this. What about uh, a person who's already been in business for a while, who's struggling? What would you tell those people out there listening and watching today, whether it's real estate or network marketing or any type of business that are struggling? What, would you give, what kind of advice would you give? Don't beat yourself up. Mm. Every day, get up and start something new. And don't take yesterday into today. Okay. Um, and if you believe in yourself and be around people that are encouraging you, mm -hmm you'll find what you need in order to pull it out of you. Cause like I said earlier, all of us have greatness on the inside of us. Wow, and you just that, having that finding that inside of you to just keep moving forward. You know, that reminds me of my first book we were gonna be releasing very soon called uh, God's Gift. And it's all inside of us. You know, I'll tell you a quick story. You know, uh, God had a call and all the angels together and said, listen, we gotta find a place to put a gift that man can't find. 
but we've got to make it that they can find it, but we have to make it difficult for them to find it. And one of the angels said, hey, let's hide it on the rock. Nah, God said, no. Hey, let's, hang, let's hide it inside the, the, the attic. And now they'll find it there. And then one angel came up with an idea, let's put it on the ocean. They'll never find it there. And then God said, mm, getting close. And then God snapped his fingers and said, wait a minute, I found it. We're hiding inside every individual, their greatness. So therefore, to find your greatness, you got to look within because it's there. Remember, that's what God put it. God does not make junk. I really appreciate what you're saying to me. Um, so you said I bless you. I've been, been on my call. Matter of fact, I've been doing calls for years, uh, five days a week, sometimes six days a week. We had this situation where the whole world was closed down. We we're doing seven days a week calling, blessing people with knowledge because we live in a world that everything right now is so short-lived that knowledge is important. But more important is not taking the knowledge, but doing something with the knowledge. So give us uh, anything else on your mind you want to share with us today, because you're amazing. Your accomplishments, your years you've been doing what you've been doing. You're out there building an organization. I understand you were you were at Columbia at one point building, yes, sir. building I was. a team yes. down there. How, did that, how was that? That was, was that? amazing. It was going to a whole nother culture, meeting people that embraced you, meeting people that wanted more in life, you know, yes. and then taking advantage of what it was that we had to offer, yes. you know, and just being embraced by people who spoke they were bilingual mm -hmm. and so being able to communicate and then the people were just so giving you know it's completely different than it is here mm -hmm. the people were open-hearted they give you gifts they they hug you it's just a, it's just different yeah you know see i understand that a lot of the countries they're always talking about the, the, the third world countries i was actually where's the second world you right. know but a lot of countries especially like over in colombia there is no retirement plan like people have in america we're so lazy in america because we could think we can fall back on it but the whole idea, they'll have nothing to fall back on. The only retirement they have is their kids and grandkids to mm -hmm. live with them mm -hmm. as they get older because they don't have retirement plans. And you folks, we're, we're so lax of days. Here's a business that you can set up. That little black book said, leave an inheritance for your children's children. A lot of people don't leave that. Why don't you build a business that has residuals? And you said a great point. 22 years, you saw something that changed your life, that made a difference in your life. And because you got started, I'm sure you changed a lot of other people's yes. lives. Yes, yes. I mean, how, so when you went to Columbia, what was your thought when you first got into Columbia? Building your team internationally yes. and leaving America, going to another country yes. where you kind of spoke, the, you know, didn't speak the language per se, but you got along. So how was that? Tell us a little bit more. What did the people... The, the people were open. They were, they wanted to talk to you. They, they wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. And that was the most important thing was because they were open. You know, they weren't closed minded. And, and the fact of the matter was, is if they didn't understand you, we would off, always find someone to interpret for you. Mm -hmm. Uno momento. <laughs> you know? <laughs> One minute. That's what right. that means. <laughs> you Donde está la baño? Over yes. there. Where's yes. the bathroom? Yes. And it was, it was just an amazing experience, you know, and just having people who had no financial gain for helping me. Right. You know, they were open to being able to help me build even though they weren't financially getting anything out of it. And I thought that was the most genuine thing mm -hmm. that I had ever experienced in, in, in the industry, yeah. you know? One of the things I learned a long time ago from my three billionaire mentors, one of them said to me, you know, he said, take your fist to close it up. He says, you can't give or receive with a closed fist, right. but the more you give, the more God will bless you. Mm -hmm. And most people don't understand in our society, we want to take, 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 and then give. Mm -hmm. But it's the opposite. We need to give in order to get. Mm -hmm. You don't tell the fireplace, hey, give me some wood, that, then I go cut the wood down. Give me some heat, I'm sorry. No, you go out there and you cut the, the wood down, or the tree down, to bring in the, the lumber to be able to put in the fireplace. Yes. So in closing, what would you say to people out there listening uh, that you want to, any thoughts on your mind and closing thoughts or? Yes. Um, I would encourage to read Proverbs, a book of Proverbs every day. And then that would give you wisdom. And then when you develop yourself, you will begin to be around people like Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas is an amazing gentleman. I tell you, the fact of the matter is I met him years ago at an event and when, when COVID came and he started doing these Zoom calls, I was just like, if I could just be in his fumes, <laughs> if I could just be in his fumes, you know, I, I, if, I, if you can get anything and just being able to get something from you. And here I am, a person that wasn't supposed to even finish college to sit next to a gentleman like you. And then you found by the grace of God to be even talking to me. I'm just so honored to be here and you giving me this opportunity to share information. I'm just like, God is good. You know, yeah. and I would encourage people to get a closer walk with God, because if you don't have a, a close walk with God, 
everything is wrapped, all right? Yeah. And you'll get your wisdom and guidance from him. You know, you said something about Proverbs, the book of day. One of the things I love about Proverbs, there's 31 books. You can read a book today, and then 30 days later read the same chapter, and you will get a whole different revelation. Because it's not that the Bible's moving, or those pages are moving, it's that our lives are moving closer to Him, and understanding what we need to do as human beings. Yes. So yeah, Proverbs, one book a day, there's 31 books in it. I'll tell you what, it's very powerful. You know, um, Solomon wrote those, I mean, it's just, just amazing. Amazing. So. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for sharing with our team and, and people around the world here that are watching this and encouraging somebody to, yes, you can do it. You know, why not you? It's your time to rise and shine. Why not? And I want to thank you because after 22 years of doing network marketing and making a decision that, hey, nobody's going to take care of me but me and uh, rolling your sleeves up, going to work, going to a whole different country to build a team, yes. that, takes, that takes guts. It takes spirit. It takes, it takes uh, tenacity. You know, it takes courage, you know, because I remember the first time I stepped off a plane in a different country where I didn't speak the language. I said, oh, my God. Well, it's a little bit, it's a little frightening, but it took courage. And now I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother yes. me. Yes. And I love going to different countries. I think I've been to 28 countries around wow. the world already. Wow. And, uh, you know, so once you get past that initial step. So let me ask you guys this that are watching. What is your heart stopping you? What is your next step to do the things that you want to do to secure your family's future? What about doing things that for your kids? What about things for retirement? So I'm gonna tell you something, these 401Ks, they're down to a K. And right now, we all need backup. My question to you, if your job closed down and gave you a pink slip today, what's your backup? Hey, I'm in real estate, Elton, as well. I understand the real estate market is changing now with the people not getting paid 6% on, mm. on uh, commissions. Mm. So everything is tightened up. But how much of that money is residual based? When I was in real estate, I remember my mentor said, Al, you're doing great. You got 54 properties. However, if half of them are vacant, you're, you're messed up. And I said, you're right, because now I got to pay Rob Peter to pay Paul. And he said, once you get into residual based income, you can live anywhere and travel as much as you want. And that's why this year I'm traveling so much in so many countries that it's mind boggling. But then again, I'm nobody special. I'm a guy that got in and listened to what my mentor said and just implemented what they said. And that's why for the last 30 plus years, I have never, never, never had a job. Mm -hmm. I've been getting paid because of residuals every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, after decade, after decade, after third decade, and I'm counting for more years to get to that fourth decade. But I wanna thank people like yourself who just taking in the information that I freely give out to bless you, to bless others, and that's what it's all about. That's our main thing, is to be a blessing to mankind. So thank you much, Ms. Sherry. Thank you so much for your interview. Thank you.